सर चालू कराए का ओके सो वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून लेट स्टार्ट विद आर सेकंड सेशन सो टुडेज एजेंडा फॉर सेकंड सेशन वुड बी वी विल बी सीइंग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अ सेंसर राइट नाउ आई एम हैविंग एंड लेटर ऑन वी विल ट्राई टू इंप्लीमेंट और ट्राई टू इंटरफेस सम सेंसर्स एंड सम मॉड्यूल्स विद द डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड सो डेवलपमेंट बोर्ड वी विल बी टेकिंग अप उनो एंड थ्रू उनो हाउ वी कैन डू सम डिफरेंट टास्क दैट वी कैन सी राइट so right now i'm having some sensors i'll just demonstrate to you what kind of a sensors i'm having uh, maybe these sensors are a very usual sensors that uh, you have already seen somewhere or uh, you have already seen in your if you are having a iot lab pretty much all colleges are uh, having some sort of a uh, iot equipments so in that these are the very common sensors so the first uh, sensor is this one so this is a uh, not captive but uh, general analog soil sensor so uh, there are two types of a soil sensor this is the mostly uh, acquired one so this is a normal uh, analog captive uh, not not the capacitive capacitive uh, no only the analog uh, soil sensor so uh, it is having two potential uh, readers so the this is a electro strip so once you <clears throat> place this uh, like uh, downward to the soil or in, in inside the soil some part of a soil so depending upon the uh, signals what uh, electrodes are manipulating as uh, uh, the moisture in a soil is getting <clears throat> connected or uh, getting reacted by electricity and depending upon that it is reading uh, what type of moisture it is having or how many percentage of a moisture uh, that soil is having or uh, uh, so, uh, what kind of a minerals other minerals are having with the soil but the mineral kind of a detection or mineral detection will not be possible with this sensor uh, uh, this sensor can be used in a small uh, agricultural program like if you wanted to create a smart uh, water supply system or uh, if you wanted to create a smart water pump system now which is a very common uh, if you search on the google also you can get pretty idea about uh, this soil sensor and most of the searches are related with this idea only but what innovation we can do we can we can create a Uh, automated uh, pumping system where once the soil is <clears throat> what soil sensor is detecting dryness in a soil uh, that time uh, uh, pump will automatically get triggered and the water supply will be started and uh, entire field will get a water that kind of a system we can do and uh, uh, as this is not a capacitive sensor so it it is only uh, having a resistance till the uh, its height is there so we cannot extend it but the uh, the possibility or the advantage with the capacitive sensor is that capacitive sensors will be uh, modified according to the nature and according to the soil type as well so depending upon the soil type you can measure some other minerals as well so uh, again it is totally depend what kind of a capacitive soil tester you are taking uh, because this is only a sensor and those are the modules uh, called as a tester modules so depending upon that you can set a threshold ratio like uh, what type of uh, minerals will be there uh, iron zinc phosphorus phosphorus sulfide so depending upon its uh, uh, chemical equation and chemical reaction equation we can get the resolution equation so that equation we can put into a code and we can examine it <clears throat> then uh, so uh, there are very uh what we can say uh, there are a lot of demand in agricultural field now to have a, a smart irrigation or a smart agriculture uh, development so once we say a smart agriculture development it means what uh, users are requiring lot of things to be automated like spraying on the crops that needs to be automated or uh, we can have uh, some kind of a disease identification kind of iot device where we can identify a plant disease and we can check whether this plant will be sustain with that disease or not or what kind of a pesticide or what kind of uh, other uh, things we can apply 
apply to prevent this uh, kind of infection so that that needs to be automated so there machine learning and ai comes so depending upon uh, situation we can use esp cam 32 to capture uh, plant photographs and then we can create a machine learning mo module which can be inserted into a intel ai stick that we talked about so that, unfortunately that is not with me right now uh, but uh, in in uh, later days if i hold on with that stick i'll definitely demonstrate that one because it is a very fantastic stick and it is giving a very good result on a usb running usb on a teflop speed and giving you a proper uh, machine learning feel or uh, uh, it gives you a feel like you are not working on a, a small development board you are working on a, a computer itself so that that is one so uh, the advantage with the capacitive sensor is you can read some other minerals as well then uh, we, we i'm having here uh, two sensors now this is a laser sensor now don't go on the size of this uh, so th this can be uh, larger than this or this can be as small as we can get now as we say this is a sensor this is just a uh, what we can say uh, a pronunciation kind of a verb like uh, actual sense this is entirely this is not the sensor this is a sensor development sheet why this is a sensor development sheet because it is having a pin in and pin outs as well as this one also this is also having a pin in pin outs right here here you can see two pin in pin in pin out are there so here are the three pin in pin outs so uh, these are what these are the connections where we can uh, connect to the development board and we can reprogram this or we can read data which is uh, captured by this or read data which is emitted by this now this is a laser sensor and it is accuracy is still one uh, something one kilometer they stated in a data sheet but i don't think so the laser will be uh, powered enough that it will go one kilometer but what i have tested is uh, i have tested till uh, 700 meters so 700 meter is signal is very strong and it is giving a proper throughput so where you can use this kind of a sensor so uh, i and yeah uh, where is the sensor sensor is this only this is only the sensor not the entire part so this we can call it as a development sheet uh, this is a development pcb and sensor is mounted over it gives us a uh, ability to reprogram it so <clears throat> where we can use this sensor so we can use the sensor in various project where we require leveling so if you are creating a robot like i'm having a small robot what i have uh, 3d printed and uh, i have uh, programmed it so this is a small robot so this is a auto uh, now this auto is uh, having a functioning lake uh, so this this lake is just fractured uh, but uh, <clears throat> So this is having a fantastic example how we can program the different things. So if you can see inside it, so here is a Uno. You can see the circuitry now. So it is a pretty messy with the wires, but you can see over here. So this is a node, uh, uh, not, not the node MCU, this is a nano. So here, here is a nano and uh, uh, below the nano, there is a expansion sheet. So this is the expansion shield, which is connected with uh, ultrasound sensor. So uh, not the ultrasound, sorry. This is the ultrasonic, not the ultrasound, because ultrasound is also looks like the same. So this is the ultrasonic sensor. So uh, how exactly this is functioning? So I'm having a Bluetooth, which will be connected to this. Uh, so Bluetooth module is not connected right now. But uh, yes, of course, on tomorrow, I'll be demonstrating this to you uh, because I uh, need to fix the broken lake first. So I'm 3D printing it. I'm having a 3D printer with me. So I'm just 3D printing it. So once I 3D print, uh, print is over, I can demonstrate how exactly it will look and how it blow, uh, works. So it can work uh, both the directional. First one is we can control it via Bluetooth or uh, via wireless as uh, I can embed uh, ESP8266, the chipset, which is uh, giving us a wireless module. And I can uh, <clears throat> control it through my web browser or application, or even I can connect this with my Bluetooth and I can control all the movements. Actually, it starts working once, once we uh, hit the proper uh, tabs or else I can pre-record some settings like uh, i have recorded dancing settings in uh, my uh, nano so uh, 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 o2 is dancing on that uh, settings 
so that is just a code what i have created and for the moments i am using servo motors so here are the servo motors so i have already placed it in inside so these are the four servo motors uh, I, I have used four servo motors for a different rotation and the uh, there are different types of servo motors available with the different rotations so this is a sg90 plastic uh, servo motors which are having a plastic gears it is not recommended always to use plastic gears because plastic gears are very soft and, and uh, if the load is more than uh, it may be a chances of slipping it and uh, they can be damaged so it is always recommended that uh, you should use uh, metallic gear so i'm i'm doing a one project where i'm creating a robotic arm so the robotic arms uh, all the parts are already printed and uh, today i'll be assembling it so that i can demonstrate with you on tomorrow so there you can control the entire part now why i'm uh, uh, creating all these things because these are the smaller uh, models where we can test our all our things so my aim is uh, or my uh, thing is where, where i'm getting a project that, that is not the aim actually my aim is to create a miniature projects uh, where we can deploy it in a very sustainable way but uh, the model what i am creating for uh, uh, a movement of the robo arm where uh, i have already gotten a project where i'll be creating a larger uh, robo arm with the 3d printed parts so uh, that is just a trial of it and uh, the finished uh, robo arm will be of a uh, one uh, foot but the actual uh, the robo arm which we will be printing that is of a 10 to 15 foot so uh, and it will be deployed in a uh, automotive uh, uh, company where uh, they will be having some stitches automatically so generally these kind of uh, robots are already available in the market but uh, they cost way to ahead on the budget what uh, that client is having so that's why we uh, thought of to create this kind of a uh, this kind of a solution for them okay so another sensor is this is a ultrasonic sensor now uh, the beauty of ultrasonic sensor is uh, this ultrasonic sensor can give you accurate distance measurement now why it is accurate because it is working on the sound so a uh, one transmitter end the one uh, which i am touching so this is a transmitter end uh, where uh, the uh, ultra ultrasonic waves are generated on the uh, sheet and then it will be transmitted once these ultrasonic waves are transmitted and they are hitted on any kind of a obstacle maybe i'm just uh, placing my hand uh, so that time whatever the distance it is uh, having so the, there that uh, ultrasound or that uh, wave is uh, disturbed or uh, it is what we can say um, uh, penetrated so in that way once it is disturbed or once it is the obstacle is there it is it is going to detect it then that rays will be reflect back and that reflection is captured at the receiver end so once the reflection is captured then the program will measure the distance so the dis for measuring the difference uh, measuring the distance i have used a uh, general calculation like uh, it is moving on the speed of sound because it is a ultrasound so uh, multiply by uh, 2 and divided by the that equation i have already used and then we can calculate the accurate accurate dif, uh, distance and we can then again if you want it into a millimeter then you can get a millimeter or if you want it to a cm centimeter you can get a centimeter or a meter or a kilometer that that is the uh, another conversion part but whatever the distance you will be getting that will be an accurate one though there is a possibility because this is a very entry level sensor there is a possibility that your signal can be contaminated now what kind of a contamination will be there atmospheric pressure or uh, controlled environment uh, is ac is on so then these all are the pollutant for ultrasound and ultrasound is getting dissolved in it so that's why a better quality of receiving signal is not available at that time and that time your distance or whatever the measurement you are doing whatever the cause you have used this ultrasound sensor or not not the ultrasound sorry ultrasonic sensor that time 
uh, uh, that time it will not give you a accurate result and no need to use any kind of a machine learning algorithm for getting the accuracy it will automatically give you the accurate result based on the what program you have created so that this is the ultra ultrasonic then there is a ultrasound sensor actually available in a miniature uh, range like this you can create a sonography machine using this exactly you uh, hear it correctly you can create a sonography machine even you can have a ecg machine or you can have a ecg sensor machine created with us just a small ecg sensor that i think i'm having that ecg sensor yes i'm having it now as today's uh, sessions are just to give you uh, demonstration of various sensors so tomorrow from tomorrow we will be working on this so this is the ECG monitoring sensor. So this is a ECG monitoring sensor uh, where an actual diode is placed over here. So this is an actual uh, circuitry of it. And then we will be getting these connectors and these connectors will be going on to the ECG pair. So this one is damaged, so I cannot use it on anybody's body but as it is damaged over here. It is rusted, uh, but still I'm having a new one. No, I'm, I'm having a bad one, but still I can get those and I can read the ECG signals very accurately almost uh, if you compare these signals depending upon what type what quality of the material you are using or what kind of quality of the sensor you are using uh, this is a uh, good quality not okay and not average and there is excellent quality as well so this sensor cost me a thousand rupees but a very high end quality sensor will cost around three to four thousand uh, but still uh, if you want a better one or just to try out with it, a lower version will be okay. It will look like the same, but only the thing is uh, it is having some, uh, what we can say, performance issues because of the poor uh, PCB sheet or isolation or soldering or something that there can be a defects in it, but still you can get it. So this will give you a perfect result on the ECG front and you can create your own portable ECG machine. Now, where it can be placed? If you are having a small project where a patient health is monitored on that project, there you can use and even you can use this on a variable device. So you can have the sensor attached to the variable device like this and uh, you just ask your customer to place the buds at the appropriate uh, uh, areas of the, uh, of the body and then you just start. And once the results are coming up, you can display that result using any of the display sensor or uh, display sheet IC2 or a general uh, PCI uh, displays and you can display that uh, sensor. Even the because of the COVID, oximeters are uh, very popular and uh, everyone, almost everyone is having oximeter nowadays. So that oximeter also you can create using full uh, scanner. So I'm having that one where it is. Yeah, where I put it. Yeah, it is. So this is a very entry level kind of a, a, a pulse sensor where you can create a pulse sensor and this is an analog uh, sensor and you can create a pulse sensor. You can output this uh, whatever the uh, sensor it have detected on a uh, acrylic sheet or on a display acrylic display or a IC2 display like the digital one what I am having and you can create a portable uh, oximeter right so that portable oximeter you can create even this is a uh, this is not that accurate as it is very exposed to the wiring and uh, these are the uh, very smaller if you can see these are the very tiny uh, what do you can say parts and it can be easily damaged you need to create a proper isolation all over it but uh, there is a accurate sensor available which is a max 522 sensor or max 508282 there are different versions of it but the max oximeter sensor where it can give you a professional result and less dropping but this also work uh, this also work perfectly uh, just you need to work around a bit you need to create a good kind of uh, isolation because here it is a light diode which will be creating uh, uh, infrared light or the actual visible light which will be penetrated uh, from your skin to the blood cells and then it start counting on it 
and again it is uh, safe to use and it is rohs compliant it is very safe to use right after that if you wanted to create an application like once you touch anything that will be started or touch again it will be uh, stopped then you can use these kind of a capacitive uh, where it is uh, these kind of a capacitive touch sensor so if i can take my uh, uh, small robo over here and uh, if i place it properly let me let me just push all the wires down okay so here it is and if i wanted to start it like this touch it and start so i can place the sensor here and i can touch it now uh, you will say that if the sensor is exposed then what is uh, use of it so this sensor is having a good uh, uh, sensing capacity as this is a capacitive so i have already 3d printed it with the uh, what we can say a slot over here uh, where i can put it um, and under it and i can touch here as this is not that sensitive but this needs to be resisted so once the resistance is captured at the touch it will activate once the touch is activated it start moving and once the touch is deactivated it stops so that that kind of application you can create even you can create your smart uh, automation system using the same so you can have a touch buttons so this is just a touch button now you can get a single touch button you can get a multi touch button so this is a single button then i am having a four panel button where i can have 1 2 3 4 5 the four touch buttons i can uh, click or, or i can tap on any of the one and i can reprogram it accordingly so if you wanted to create a security system like the door lock or something or uh, if you wanted to create any biometric lock or sensor that there you can utilize it i'm i'm having that but i'm just not getting it maybe it is lost in some uh, sensors because i'm having almost uh, 1000 or odd sensors with me so we need to check yeah now the another sensor is so it is very difficult to tap each and every sensor but uh, we'll try to demonstrate to you what i can do now this is a vibration sensor it is having a small tube and some kind of a uh, rings in it uh, maybe something is there it, it is making a noise so uh, this is a vibration sensor so once it is detected any vibration at the surface so if i put it over here like this you can see it betterly and if i tap here and if my uh, skin is vibrates and it detects the vibration even you can adjust its sensitivity with the physio sensor over here to potentiometer here so the potentiometer can be adjusted according to the sensitivity so the anti clockwise is the less sensitive and clockwise is the more sensitive that way you can adjust the setting it, it will not require any kind of a signal booster some of the sensor modules require signal boosters like uh, soil sensor so soil sensor required a signal booster why because it needs to work with the bidirectional way it needs to follow the uh, signal or the electrical current and then once the electrical current is halted or electrical current is making any kind of a reaction with the moisture or any kind of a water uh, particles then it needs to be captured again so for that uh, we required a signal multiplexer so that signal multiplexer is already shipped with this it, it is also having a same uh, uh uh this uh, a button uh, where we your button where you can potentiometer sorry not the piezo potentiometer where you can adjust the sensitivity then another part uh, we need to sense pollutants or gases in the air so there are different types of a gas sensors so this is the typical example of the mq type of a gas sensor so this is i'm holding what it is it is a mq2 so it is a alcohol sensor and co2 sensor so depending upon the uh, structure of this because uh, in inside this uh, sheet this uh, uh, metal uh, what we can say resist inside it uh, metal sheet inside it there is a paper which is getting uh, what uh, reacted with the different kinds of a Uh, even a smell or a uh, different kinds of uh, uh, vapors in in the air so i'm having mq2 i'm having uh, mq4 mq135 mq6 mq9 so all the mq parts i'm having 
So based on their data sheet, some are alcohol sensor, some are uh, carbon dioxide sensor, some are carbon carbonate sensor, some are dust particle sensor, some are uh, uh, depending upon the situation, some are phosphorus sensors. Uh, that depending upon other uh, pollutants there are there even these are uh, used in uh, liquid gas sensors as well as uh, it, these are placed just before the tanker and once that gas is getting leaked it can be automatically detected even i'm having an oxygen sensor so it can tell uh, what type of oxygen uh, you are having in the, this area so what kind of uh, oxygen means oxygen is uh, only one type but still the uh, effectiveness of oxygen oxygen's ratio is 80 percent 10 percent 100 percent pure so 100 percent pure oxygen it is very difficult nowadays to see in at least in uh, cities i don't know about the villages uh, maybe there also we will be not getting 100 percent oxygen we will be getting a 70 75 so that that we can have then i'm having a dust particle analyzer sensor so this is a dust particle analyzer sensor which will analyze all kinds of a dust so it can analyze what type of a dust it is it is a carbon dust it is a non-carbon dust it is a toxic or uh, it is having a uh, what kind of a dust particles like uh, it can be anything so this is a dust particle sensor or technically it is a dust particle percolate sensor so after that uh, This is a FM trans receiver. This is a transfer and uh, this is a receiver. So, uh, sorry, uh, this is a transmitter and this is a receiver. So this is a FM transmitter receiver. So you can create your own uh, uh, frequency out of it or you can listen on uh, any frequency. So basically this is used to create uh, RCs like remote controlled vehicles or if you wanted to create a remote control and then you can create it. Um, I'm very doubtful about the range, but uh, what I have tested, uh, I've got a range about one kilometer. So one kilometer I can able to listen the signal and can send signal in a controlled environment not on the open space uh, and how i achieved it uh, again i have uh, two three multiplexer in between to create it but in our uh, in a open space i got it till 750 yes seven, if i'm correct yes 750 meters it is giving a proper result but again 750 for the remote control if i wanted to create uh, any kind of a mechanism like uh, in pune there is a metro work going on so if i wanted to control their lift or the good lift uh, through remote control then i can use this kind of a small sensor and i can control it uh, instead of taking the huge uh, hydraulic controllers i can use a digital controller like this so i can create a frequency again you can create a frequency lock so no other can connect with this uh, just give me a second. I'm, I'm getting. Uh, very sorry that that call was from my client and uh, he called me several times so that's why i need to pick that up okay so uh moving forward i'm having yeah i've got the multiplexers so these are the signal multiplexers where one end will be go to the sensor and another will be to the microcontroller to uh, boost it now this is a optical radar 
uh, I have not attached it yet. I have not used it yet. Uh, but this is an optical radar which can be used to uh, create the actual radars and uh, there you can uh, check uh, what kind of a, a parameter bridge you wanted to create so this is a very good uh, feature or this is a very good sensor to create a uh, security applications then here is it, it is a temperature sensor called dht11 so i'm having a dht11 there are different uh, sensors available dht12 uh, DHT22, DHT11, DHT81. So depending upon the uh, DHT part, uh, now what DHT is, DHT is the diode ID. So uh, the higher number you go, the more sensitive diode you will be getting. So this is a DHT11, which is normally used and it is having a delay of uh, one or two, three minutes. Minimum is one and maximum is three minutes to capture uh, temperature. So whatever the temperature it is going to capture, it is having that delay. Yeah. So here it is a Bluetooth module. Yes. So this is a Bluetooth module. Uh, the one we just talked in a morning session. So if I wanted to integrate this with uh, uh, our Arduino board, so we can integrate it. One, it is a VCC and uh, another is a ground and then other two are the RX and TX. So accordingly, we need to flash it. The most important part is when you are uh, programming your Arduino board, your, the RX, TX pins of the uh, any of the uh, module, if, it is having that need to be disconnected otherwise uh, your uh, board will not get programmed properly and this is having a uh, almost uh, 100 meters range as it is a hc6 uh, hd uh, hc5 is also coming up these are the versions generally we get a 10 meters of a range but it is boosted enough then this is a ir sensor where you can use it for uh, multiple operations like if you have seen uh, automatic uh, sanitizer dispenser uh, uh, videos on YouTube and those are creating DIY automatic hand, hand sanitizer dispenser so there they have used this kind of a IR sensor so this is a proximity IR sensor once a proximity and the distance uh, whatever the object is close to it uh, and after that it will activate so it is having a two ends one is a IR emitter and one is a IR receiver. So it will uh, emit the infrared signal and then it, this will capture it. So this also used for uh, ob obstacle detection or a distance measurement, but the signal is contaminated in the various things and it is again having a very limited range. So that's why uh, it is avoided. Uh, it is only used in close proximity. So you can create a remote with IR as well. So if you wanted to try it out for a fun, so instead of uh, using your own TV remote, you can uh, create a TV remote using uh, IR and some other uh, modules like a keypad module, then Arduino Uno needs to be there as a controller. And uh, if you put it on a, a PCB sheet, then you can actually control your TV. That 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 is possibility. So that that is, this is the uh, IR module. Then, uh, This is a fire detector module, or we can say a flame module, which is having IR uh, receiver and trans receiver, we can say transmitter and receiver, both is here. So once it is detecting uh, any kind of a warmness near to it, it will start reacting. Now that sensitivity you can control through uh, here through this button. Uh, now it is more uh, it is already set it to the more sensitive so uh, it can sense the warmness very prominently and once it is then automatically it triggers the alarm so if you have created a system where the fire needs to be uh, identified or warmness needs to be identified needs to be uh, what we can say alerted to the user then what you can do is you can use this flame sensor even this flame sensor comes with the different uh, configuration like uh, two heads four heads five heads so depending upon the area or what kind of area you wanted to control which direction because this is not the multi-directional this is not the omnidirectional this is only the directional uh, way so in in a straight line it will through a ir not on the omnidirectional way and then once the ir detected a warmness 
um, based on the ratio what we have set it then it will start triggering up so if the alarm is connected to the uh, output cycle of the board then alarm will be triggered otherwise on visual signs also you can see some leds blinking over here so it is having two leds one is for programming so stating that it is turned on and another is for the detection Now this one is a tilt sensor. This is a tilt sensor. Now uh, what this tilt sensor will do? The application of tilt sensor can be if you are creating a app, uh, creating a project where you wanted to check the level and if it is not on the level or if it is not on the setted level, it it is not always a straight one. It can be a uh, in this angle or a ninety degree or one eighty degree or one sixty degree or a twenty degree kind of angle. And if it is leaving that trajectory, it will start triggering the alarm that you are losing something. So this can be used as we have already used this in our one project where we have created a smart goggles for uh, blind uh, where we have used this. So this the, that is not the uh, ordinary goggle what you see in uh, YouTube videos where uh, 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 developers have embedded some ultrasonic sensor and once the object is detected it that uh, uh, goggle is start vibrating using a vibration uh, stick. Uh, that is not that kind of a goggle. Uh, we have implemented a machine learning with that. So goggle is having camera in uh, embedded. So it is continuously taking a video that, that is a live stream. And uh, uh, Protenta we used and uh, Protenta with the Intel stick we used. And uh, that that entire data is getting collected on the cloud. And uh, for the cloud, we are having only uh, 256 kbps as a speed. So we are taking only a G code. So that data will be converted into G code and that will be forwarded into a cloud and there is a data set. So what that camera is doing, camera is taking a continuous recording. What our machine learning model is doing, machine learning model is analyzing and detecting various objects and identifying it. It is not only detection of the model, they are identifying it means if uh, uh, that person is looking at the screen and uh, uh, that camera have captured screen with the uh, my camera on so our module will detect laptop and external camera because it can see the external uh, mounting of the camera so it will it will detect that even uh, we have implemented a ratio where we can determine the object if that object is moving object then it is moving from which direction and it is going to the which direction so it is helping persons like uh, if they are crossing a road or they are walking on the road so they can uh, they can here and how exactly these persons will get to know what is there and there is obstacle or not we have created an output cycle using a playback system where uh, whatever the alerts are there and whatever the guidance that person will be getting that is through the actual voice so we have implemented a chronicle voice in it so based on the g code it is detecting means if a bus is coming towards that person then it will detect bus and then it will detect the which direction left right up front behind so behind it will detect if we uh, mount uh, another harshening like uh, we are placing a goggle like this and we are again giving a holder and on at the back also we are having a camera so uh, it can detect the uh, uh, whatever the object coming from a back and it will continuously sync with the mobile phone application and then it will convert that uh, data whatever we have sent to the mobile phone uh, mobile application again and it is just uh, uh, speaking out to the person that bus behind left side and what is the speed 20 kilometer per hour and closing and when it is proximity of uh, 10 meters automatically it start bumping uh, right or it start vibrating and uh, uh, making a uh, la large or the loud sound so that person will hear it uh, now why it is vibrating maybe that blind mm, person is deaf also that's why so that kind of application what we have used there we have used the tilt sensor the main part to tell you about this is there we have used a tilt sensor where a uh, person when it, uh, that person is walking and if, if that person is starting climbing on the stairs that time it can detect what kind of a ratio it is and if 
uh, suddenly that person hit something or uh, he is now or he she is now falling then it can detect the trajectory and can alert us or can alert the emergency services so that that is there you can use or you can use with uh, this auto like i have pointed out here that he is walking and once it is uh, drifting or falling down it can detect the trajectory is lost and can try to uh, communicate even if the trajectory is lost then uh, we can create a, a resistance mechanism where we can correct the things there also it is helpful uh, yeah now what i can have to show you yes so this is another i uh, know this is a just a, This is a LDR module. This is the LDR, light detecting and reflection. Uh, depending upon the reflection and the light detecting, it can gives us the result. So we can create many things out of it. We can create an automation system. So if the light is detected, then automatically lights will be the whatever the street lights are there, it will be turned off automatically. So once the uh, uh, sunlight is detected once sunlight is not detecting automatically turns on the light so this can go on uh, uh, poles or this can go into your garden or something so and even much more things for the robots for the assembly part we can use a lot of things to do then here are the <coughs> simple usb uh, wi-fi connectors where we can use with uh, uh, our uh, raspberry pi and uh, we can do some programming out of it yeah so i think now it is time to <clears throat> get some sensors in action now let's take it with the dht 11 so let's see how exactly dht is working so before that i'll just explain you how the ide environment is functioning in this case let me present my screen Okay. Is the screen visible? I think it is. Okay. So this is the ID, which is uh, <clears throat> Arduino's ID. You can use any of the ID, which which is which needs to have a capacity to communicate with Arduino boards or any of the development boards. That that is the only basic requirement. If you are having that thing, even the PyCharm also you can configure uh, Arduino to uh, get. <clears throat> items burned on or the uh, sketches burn from pycharm id so but typically i i like to code it into a arduino id only so i'm having a 1.813 uh, the latest version is already there i need to update it <clears throat> now this is a program now on the program part uh, arduino is not uh, uh, giving it name as a program uh, they they called it as a sketch now why sketch because it is the instructions what you are giving to the uh, module or what uh, to the uh, microcontroller to perform so that's why it is a sketch so you are drawing something uh, digitally and those things are doing it digitally or analog that's why so this is a sketch and uh, <clears throat> this is a main setup and uh, this is a main loop so the, all the functions will go here all the declarations will go here now uh, to program arduino it is not necessary to use embedded c you can use only c embedded c java python perl ruby any programming language which can communicate on the machine level so machine level programming languages are always uh, compatible with any development board uh, not sure with the Raspberry because it needs to be configured through Raspberry and only. Uh, but uh, with the other development board, it is fantastically working. So you can code according to your requirement. Uh, the code what I'm going to show you, it is in embedded C or in, some are in normal C. So it is very basic to um, programming language to all. So everyone can understand it. But uh, if you wanted to into a Python, you can do in Python. So I'm having bunch of codes. So uh, Eventually, I'll be uh, distributing these codes with you, so you can try it out. Even on tomorrow, those are not having uh, these devices. You can try it on a simulator. On simulator, also you need to do the exact way. You need to wire the things uh, digitally, like I'm doing here. 
uh, so uh, and program of course you need to program it like i'm doing in ide only the thing is here i need to burn it to the board there you will not uh, need to burn it on uh, we will be taking up with the thinkercad okay so here i'm having a uh, plenty of things so dht11 is into a temperature so let's do temperature sensor so the program i have already created so here are the pins so dht11 is having three pins vcc ground and data data is what it is a signal transmission uh, or trans uh, transmission uh, pin where we can get that signal from uh, sensor and, or we can instruct sensor uh, VCC is 5 volt, so it will going to work on the 5 volt. It will not work on the 3.3. Some are working on 3.3. Again, this is an analog sensor. It's not a digital sensor. But other hand, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a digital sensor. Now let's interface this. So I'll be using Arduino Uno. Oh, where where is my Arduino? Okay, so I'll be using Arduino Uno with a normal cable. So firstly to program this you need to give the power to the board even some programs are uh, working or some uh, sensors are working with just usb uh, powered uh, which is coming through your computer that will be work or otherwise uh, some uh, sensors like this this particular sensor they required at least a 5 volt external supply to work so it will not going to work with your usb port so there you need to have the external uh, uh, usb adapter or any of the adapter which can be taken from the direct dc current and you need to uh, place the dc current voltage over here directly right. so is my uno visible yeah it is now just i'm opening up with the created the file now here you need to work with some libraries are uh, as these are the sensors these are the analog sensor needs to uh, operate with the certain conditions which are defined into a libraries so in a easy language we can say to operate with this sensor you need to install drivers so these libraries will work as a drivers and, and i guess all the drivers are installed at my end let's fire it up and then we'll see right so firstly i'll uh, program this or i'll just integrate this with my uh, board uh, before just uh, putting the uh, connectors the connecting wires uh, i would like to explain you this id uh, now this button if you can see this is a verify button means the compilation button uh, once you click on this it will compile if there is an error then you can see errors at this black screen then uh, this is a compile and upload button once you have uh, no uh, errors visual errors then you can go ahead and upload this code into your development board so to upload it once you click on upload it will recompile it and then upload it to the uh, board you can see the status over here and uh, once it is uh, done uploading, then you can see the done uploading status over here. And after that, uh, you are having a new file button, you are having open, you are having save. Then this is the most important part is the serial monitor. So if you are having something out, means the display. And uh, if you have not attached your display, uh, any OLED or any display, and you wanted to see the what readings this, this thing is having, not the digital, only the analog reading, then you can switch to the analog serial monitor now as my uh, uno is connected but it is giving me an error that com6 is not available why because uh, maybe in the previous session i have connected my uno with the com6 port and now what i have connected is not a com6 so where we can select the different boards so you need to go to the tools here is a board tab so here in the board you can see various boards so I have already installed ESP and ESP8266 boards. That's why it is showing all the family. So if you go on Arduino AVR boards, and these are the different different boards which Arduino have created. So there are plenty of the development boards. So it is totally dependent upon if you are using an Arduino compiler or Arduino microcontroller. So here you can select your appropriate board. So currently we are using Arduino Uno and this is a version 3 that is why it is a revised r3 version but you need to select uno and then you need to select port so if you have four five 
uh, USB ports and uh, from that three four I've connected to Arduino or any of the node uh, any of the development board then it can list all the ports so right now it is listing only one as I have only one connected so I'll select this so once I select this I can select uh, or I can click on get board information so if you get the information uh, sometime you will not get a build type vid or peer uh, and serial number build type and serial number okay it is fine but you need to get vid and pid vid is what it is a, a virtual id and pid is a product id so this two things you need to get so once you get this information it means that your board is already connected with the arduino and you are ready to fire it up now uh, let's interface this so for this i'll be using some connector cable so for this let me now to connect a sensor with the board as this is a pin out and it will go in in this pin so we need to use female male to female uh, connector wire so i'm having a male to male i'm having female to female and yes this is a female to male connector wire so these are just a jumper wires normal jumper wires will be connecting it these these ends will go to your arduino board i'll require only two of them so i'll uh, three of them so i'll take three i'll put it like this you have to press it all the way till the end is reaches if it is not sliding up together uh, do it one by one it needs to be secured like this so this will not lose up if you if you are having a loose contact then you might not fire this properly or not get the results properly now uh, here we need to see the first one is a vcc middle one is a uh, data and last one is gnd that is a ground so here vcc which is my yellow cable in my case this yellow will go to 5 volt now where you will be getting a 5 volt you will be getting a 5 volt on the analog side analog port side of the arduino Uno. so i'll be choosing ground ground and this is a 5 volt so uh, if your board is already fired up don't directly fire it uh, don't directly give power to your sensor it may uh, cause damage to your sensor as ground is not connected so the middle one is a data now here at my program i have used data pin on the 2 so this is this is a digital uh, 2 so i'll be using a digital 2 for my data now we'll be seeing that this is a digital 2 and you said this is a analog sensor yes sensor is analog but the read out pins which is configured at the sensor these are the digital pins that's why we need to put it onto a digital yeah so here i have put it on the digital and one will go to the ground so you can get three grounds on a uno two just uh, uh, in the line of five volt uh, here it is two volt or two ground or one ground will be here which is a near you can choose and you can apply ground is ground only so here is my uh, sensor is connected i'll just fire it up and i'll fire the program so once it is getting a proper uh, voltage it is uh, just turned on with the led now i'll start uploading it don't worry i'll be explaining the how to write programs if you all are or some are uh, very new to this now it is saying me what is giving me a way away errors that this key node global constructor of oh, something is wrong with this Maybe I have chosen the wrong DHT. Oh, fine. I'm not having a DHT library installed with me. Okay, we will. Uh, that is a pain because uh, sometime if your libraries are not functioning, though I have already installed it, maybe the uh, updates are uh, available for the library and that update is not properly configured so what we'll do is we'll skip with the dht 
uh, anyway we are going to create a weather station so we will be interacting this dhd with node mcu uh, on that uh, session so that time i'll demonstrate with the uh, dhd 11 so for uh, the moment what we'll do is we'll check it with the fire alarm again it is having a three pins i'll put this side We are having a flame. Then here the pin. Now, why I've written the pin downs? Because uh, every time if I'm changing on my code, so it is very difficult to demonstrate every time. So that's why the D zero zero is on eleven. So definitely it is on eleven. Yes. So flame pin is on eleven. So if you can see that the buzzer pin means the buzzer you can implement. Uh, once the fire is detected, it will start buzzing it on, or or you can have a flame pin. So here we are not having a buzzer connected but definitely i can connect the buzzer here i'm having a buzzer too uh, and even it is having a display leds so i'll just pin it up give me a minute vcc is again 5 volt ground 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 5 volt middle one is the data no sorry middle one is the ground so you need to you need to see uh, the pinouts properly on the sensor. So if you are uh, assuming that every time it is in the same order, it is not in the same order. So you need to check. Like I'm assuming that middle one will be a data, but it is ground in this case. So DCC is set, ground is set. And finally, DO0. So do for it is on 11. So I will put it on 8, 9, 10, 11 or i can i can put it on the seven as well but i need to change it here right nine ten eleven okay and then now let's file it up it is powered on and here i go yes so far so good it is compiling my sketch yes it is compiled properly and done uploading so what I have written in this case, so I've written a simple pin mode that uh, I have uh, once the signal is up means once this uh, sensor is up and if the uh, what we can say if the heat is detected, then raise an alarm and give the information. So right now here there is no flame. So it will give us a result like no worries. Now, I have set this on a bird rate of uh, 9600. Now, what is a bird rate and what is the uh, significance of bird rate is, yes, we will be taking it up in a programming session when we are programming this. So, here it is continuously printing, no worries, no worries, no worries. So, it means what? You can configure it according to uh, your requirement. So, here, once it is detecting a flame, it is saying, Aag lagli pada pada pada. So, uh, in, in uh, Hindi, it is uh, Aag lagi bhago bhago bhago. So, once it is detected a uh, low current then it will automatically this is a low current once the heat is detected it stops the current it means that it is uh, having an unusual activity and it will print the thing and it will raise an uh, buzzer so let's try this out i'll just bring up the math stick switched off my fan as well uh, for uh, what we can say better for a better experience I'll just take out our yes can everyone see my video is my video visible no sir. It is not visible. No sir. Oh. अभी तक video visible नहीं था. मतलब जितना explain किया था. No sir. PPT is visible but video is not there sir.
now the sensor part what i have explained all the sensors i have shown that time uh, uh, video was visible yes sir it is visible hello sir yeah sorry i got disconnected because of the bad network at my side so uh, for the realistic view and the realistic work of this let's put the buzzer uh, for the buzzer again we'll be requiring two pins small end of the buzzer is ground and the larger one is a uh, vcc so i'm triggering it on a low current so buzzer will not sound it loudly as i'm giving a power of a uh, 3 volt as this needs to have at least 5 volts to operate now what i'll do is i'll put the uh, 3 volt to it i'm interfacing this to 3 volt and one is for ground now we are ready now it is giving us a this beep what happened Maybe I'm having a bad. Uh, okay, let me check with this. Welcome to the serial monitor. There it is. No worries. Now what I'm doing? I'm just taking up the fire over here. I can see it better. i'm sharing my screen as well okay now it is no worries i'm just acting it up as you can see the code is changed and now it is showing that green led is blinking now it's supposed to be a red led so i have uh, uh, changed the sequencing so if uh, the signal is low then you need to turn it on it's supposed to be signal is high then turned on so depending upon what type of uh, code you are doing so even if you can see the sensitivity it is having a small flume uh, now it is again again i will switch it off so if you can see here it needs to be a green led always not the red but uh, i have changed the sequence of the code so once a uh, signal is a low then you need to turn on the alarm that's why it is turning the green led so it's supposed to be signal is high then turned on the alarm so it's supposed to uh, open up a, a red one but still it is working perfectly as these are the analog sensors so uh, depending upon what type of a code you are doing so you can manipulate this so that's why that buzzer is continuously uh, sounding as i have changed here so if 
flame is low then buzzer pin is high and green led will low so it needs to be low and uh, your green led needs to be glowed up red lean to be low so here you need to change the things so that was the flame sensor let's integrate uh, another sensor that is a uh, ultrasound sensor ultrasonic sensor so it is having a uh, four pins so here if you can see it, it is it is having a four pins like first one is a ground another is a echo then is a trigger and then vcc now v, vcc and ground you already know now what is a trigger once the trigger pin is on it means that the transmitter end of the sensor is started transmitting your ultrasonic sensor ultrasonic uh, wavelengths so once that wave is captured here that is what that is the echo what is been captured so once the echo is captured it will get the result out so i'm having a basic code for measuring the distance of the obstacle and i have converted it into centimeters so this is the pin what we need to program so again uh, this will work on 5 volt it will not work on 3.3 .3. now here if you can see we have triggered a pin uh, on a 10 and we have eco pin on a 13 and obviously vcc and ground so let's connect it so first i am connecting my vcc vcc is supposed to be at uh, so this is here. this is yellow yellow to be on five volt then ground needs to be grounded then it needs to be at Eight, nine, ten. Trigger needs to be at ten, and I'll borrow a one more jumper wire, and I'll put it on eco, and eco will go to thirteen. And if you wanted to change the pins, you can directly change in the program, and then change in on your circuit. So this is my circuit done. Let's burn this program to the arduino now uh, overwriting uh, the program will not damage your flash some sometimes uh, some expert says that if you overwrite the program it will damage the uh, module or you need to reset the module first in order to uh, overwrite the uh, program but so far uh, i'm using the this uh, uh, board for three to four years and i'm continuously reprogramming it and i'm just overwriting it uh, I've never faced this kind of uh, issues and even the official Arduino is also not stating this so it is maybe a bad experience to some developers so okay so we have done uploading it now let's see uh, the serial monitor for information now on this we are getting distance out of range now why distance is out of range because I have not properly wired this Or to check this, uh, sometimes ultra, ultrasonic sensors are not uh, uh, emitting uh, your uh, uh, sound properly and it, it can give uh, out of range as a warning, the warning what you have set it, the text what you have set it. So uh, there is two troubleshooting uh, areas where we can improve our performance. First troubleshoot method is you can uh, restart your uh, development board like I've, I've done right now or else you can change the wiring and of course you need to check your wiring each time properly you have uh, secured it properly or not on the port okay now i suppose to get some kind of a result and still it is saying that uh, it is out of range so i need to check my wiring itself okay so here it is the ground ground will go to ground first i'll disconnect my port 
these errors can come any time so you need to be prepared with this after that uh, echo echo needs to go to 13 echo is brown so it will go to 13 8 9 10 11 13 then trigger trigger is orange trigger needs to go to 8 9 10 11 12 13 here it is 13 yeah and then finally yellow is a vcc vcc will go to 5 and then we'll try to fire it up. Yeah, now you can see the distance. Now I'm just moving it and uh, I'm moving it to the facing to my screen and it is approximately a 20 centimeters. Now there is a change in my distance. Now why? Because when I'm talking, my hand is just moving a bit or if I'm moving like this, it is changing the distance. So it is that sensitive. Only the thing is the sensitivity you cannot control using any uh, meter or something that is built in. And if I place my hand at as obstacle, then you can see the readings are consistent. So here, if you can see, I'm not moving. I'm perfectly still, but I'm not still. My hand is still shaking. That is getting a distance. If I just increased my distance, my uh, my hand is moving. So it is taking up the distance. So my hand is at 39 centimeters and millimeters are changing. So this is the most accurate one and if i place it near to this it is saying that it is at three centimeters and if i completely close this like this it is showing out of range now why it is out of range because the receiver is not getting an echo signal and even uh, the range of uh, the signal is 350 meters as this is the only range of the sound per minute which is traveling right so if I move like this uh, behind me, uh, sorry, 3600 meters, not not only the uh, 360 meters or 360 meters, I think uh, I'm, I'm confused in that uh, state. I'll let you know. So uh, behind me, there is a wall. So that wall is uh, at 562 centimeters, right? And upside it is 174 centimeters so it is a very good uh, program to or very good sensor to use in various applications like if you wanted to trace uh, the distance or you wanted to create a parking sensor or you wanted to create a robot which is uh, continuously checking the uh, range like we did in uh, uh, our uh, goggle where we use uh, a better ultrasonic sensor uh, where it can give us uh, accurate results now i've leaved my sensor so it is taking up a uh, bit changes in the meters it is uh very in meters but in centimeter it is giving us a perfect uh centimeter length it is 242 centimeters and why it is varying 14 18 or 14 18 16 26 because of my uh, uh, uh laptop fan my fan is moving 100 percent on the 100 uh, percent ratio so that's why some vibration is getting created and that vibration is captured here so that sensitive it is so, yeah. again there are a lot of things to uh, show so what we'll do is we'll take it one by one in each session so i guess uh, this is for the day so if we are having any questions we are open for question answers and uh, on tomorrow's first sessions we will be taking up with the how to code with your sensor so that is also important it is not only a uh, thing that uh, you can take up the code and you can start writing it but you need to understand some basic uh, rules of uh, or the syntax of the sketch right so thank you we are open for question answers
is there any question sir please tell us the names of any simulator any uh, simulator uh, because Tinker cat yeah, yeah i'm i'm for, just giving uh, sir for arduino as well as raspberry pi if you know the tinker cat can book yeah yeah tinker cat i'm i'm giving you link as well yes thank you Yes. Hello, sir. This is the thing. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is the difference between machine-to-machine -machine communication and uh, uh, we can say like sensor which are communicating some data? Like where if sensors are not available, like hmm. IoT communication and machine-to-machine -communi machine -machine communication. Hmm. But it is totally depending upon what type of uh, communication uh, method you are using. Your uh, if, if it is considered with the IoT MQTT or uh, secure MQTT or what kind of. So if you are taking up a machine to machine communication with any of the sensing technology like WSL or uh, infrared, so it is totally depend upon that. But if you are talking about the API level, so if you just wanted to uh, receive and send uh, data, not the signal, only the data, then we can use the API or the REST APIs to communicate. So in the both situation, whether it is sensor to machine communication or machine to machine communication, if you wanted to send the data, then we will be using API or REST APIs. So uh, and the difference in machine to machine is we, we are talking with the code to code. So like, for example, my uh, laptop will be talking with my uh, development board. So here the media is com link. So through com link, it is traversing. So it is totally depend upon the media what you are using. Even on the wireless also machine to machine communication is possible. So depending upon what type of media for a retransmission you are using, that 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 makes sense. Means machine to machine is not IoT communication. Uh, it is totally depend what context you are taking. If that machine is a IoT machine, so that machine is enabled uh, on the network, or, and it is having a capacity to communicate on a network, and it is talking to the another machine which is not having a capacity to uh, communicate on the network. Though uh, one of the machine is having a network capability, it is a IoT. But you are having two machines which are communicating via serial communication, machine to machine communication, via serial communication where no network as such is uh, uh, implemented then it is not a iot one but nowadays it is very difficult to find these kind of a machines because those are the analog machines uh, so for example suppose i am controlling my fan from using mobile application so is it that is uh, iot okay means if i am controlling my uh, fan using mobile application so that is called iot that is IoT, and if you are controlling it with only dimmer, that is only a machine to machine without IoT communication. Dimmer. That is just that is the analog okay. communication. Okay. So through through mobile without our IoT, is it possible to control the fan? Without network, it is not possible because through mobile, when you are connecting your mobile to a relay, uh, so for controlling a fan, you will be requiring a relay. So maybe a eight switch or four switch or single relay, five volt or two forty volts. So on that relay, you need to give a trigger command. So how you will be giving a trigger command? So if your phone is connecting to it, maybe you are using a Bluetooth module or maybe using a, a Wi-Fi module to control it. So once these modules are coming up, these are the network initiators and these are the network carriers. So once the network carrier is attached to it, that is becomes a network communication. It is IoT one. IoT. Okay, means whenever a network comes in picture, we can say it is a IoT. It is IoT when there is no network, like in a mechanical uh, uh, devices. So mechanical devices are connected with each other using other media like hydraulic or pneumatic, where your uh, IoT your network is not connected. Okay. So that time, this that machine to machine communication is non IoT machine to machine communication. Okay, but sir, in uh, that uh, whatever example I have given, in that if you are not using IoT protocol stack, hmm. then then also can we call it as a IoT? If you are taking it on a network, by my observation, yes, it is a IoT. But if you can take with the research papers designations, what 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 the research paper are talking about in the machine to machine communication. If you are not using any of the IoT architectural stack, maybe it is a two layer, five layers, eight years or sixteen mm -hmm. layers. So that is not a IoT machine to machine communication. Okay. But 
in a real time if you can see uh, the real time observation if you see what is iot it is a networkly connected machines or mm. instruments okay. those things are iot things so if you are taking your mobile phone mm. talking to the media that you, whether it is uh, it is a, a wifi or a thread whatever you are taking and then you are controlling a device in between there is a actuator called relay mm. so you are not directly controlling your fan you are controlling only relay Okay. So you are talking with the relay and your machine. You are not talking with the fan. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any more questions? Okay. So I think there is no more question. Let's uh, stop for the day. Uh, we'll continue with uh, other session from tomorrow. And uh, if still, if you are having any questions related with any kind of IoT part, then you can place in a group. I'm I'm already uh, in a group, so I can be able to answer you on that. So thank you very much for listening me very patiently for a first day and asking me a very good and interesting questions. Thank you very much.